hello welcome to my channel i'm ifidika if you're joining us for the first time if this is your first time of watching any of my videos welcome 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 to my channel and if you're a returning subscriber welcome back i'm glad you guys keep on watching my videos anyway if you're a first time viewer hit the subscribe button right now and hit the bell button so you get notified when i post new videos i post very educative and interesting videos so today we're going to be talking about suicide and joining me is a psychologist who's going to give us a professional view of um, what she thinks about suicide so i'm going to join her on, a, uh, on <laughs> I'm going to join on a Zoom call and we're going to talk about things concerning suicide, the um, before and aftermath. Hi. Hello. <laughs> Good morning. Good <laughs> morning. Uh, thank you for joining my YouTube channel. <laughs> um, I'm glad to be here. Thank you. Yeah. For your patience to wait to the last month and all. Thank you very much. Don't worry. Don't worry. I, I know um, everyone has their busy um, schedule, so you just have to plan and organize yourself. It's just all right. Anyway, kindly introduce yourself. Okay. I am Jepsin Emmanuel Sharon, a psychologist. A clinical psychologist in training currently on my IT, your likely practicum internship at Lagos University Teaching Hospital. And I volunteer with several NGOs, stand to end rape. I'm currently working as a first aid on Lagos COVID 19 psychosocial response team. So that's what I do now in my IT, then volunteering with various NGOs. That's great. That's great. Well, today I uh, invited you here so we could talk about um, suicide, the antecedents and aftermath of suicide. So, suicide is basically killing oneself, whether it's yeah. um, unequivocally or ambivalently. So, um, what causes um, suicide what makes someone suicidal okay okay I think before we even go into that we need to clarify some terms when it comes to suicide, suicide Very, terms. Oh, okay yes. like um like the suicide jargons or something like no, that just, just two things I feel we should know suicidal ideation okay. and then suicidal okay. completion now, suicidal okay. ideation Suicidal ideation is still the process of thinking, thinking, plans, either thinking on it um, very deeply to the point that you have plans or just fleeting, fleeting considerations. The, the thought just passes through your mind. And then suicidal completion is somebody who has actually attempted suicide and has been successful at it. So suicidal completion is basically suicide, what we call suicide, someone who has finally been able to take their own life. But suicidal ideation is still in that contemplative stage. Oh, oh yes, okay. thinking about it and all of that. Now there are various okay. causes for suicide. Really, suicide cannot be looked at as a standalone, in the sense that suicide is always a symptom of something. There's always something underlying it. It's a, it's the result of something on its own. A person, or let me say, as 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 humans, our first instinct for survival is to protect our own lives. That's the first in instinct. So once you see a person tending towards the extreme of wanting to take their own life, you know that there's an underlying problem. There is, there is that thing, or I like say the person is at a point where they don't see a reason for being alive anymore. Mm -hmm. And it could be caused by several things. It could be physical, physical health conditions or mental health conditions or general social conditions. And for example, if we say family history, the person who has a family history of violence or suicide has a higher chance of committing suicide. In the sense that you have a family member who has committed suicide, get that dark shadow is over the family, you guys share the same biological makeup and all of that. So mental health issues generally, the closer a person is who has a mental health issue, the higher your vulnerability to having it. The farther the person is. So if it's like a sister who has a mental health issue, 
you who is a sister have have a higher chance compared to probably a cousin of your sisters do you get my point so the closer yeah. the person the closer the person is the higher the chances of of um vulnerability to that particular mental health yeah. issue and then we have um child abuse sexual abuse all of that a person who has been sexually abused you know, let me say you know most times people who <laughs> who survive mental um, um sexual abuse physical assault and all of that they they tend to have this um how would i put it this change in the way they see life for especially in this, let's just bring it down to our own climate our society where we value virginity we value chastity and purity and all of that yeah. and then this is something that has been taken away from you forcefully similarly the person begins to see herself or himself as worthless and all of that and the moment a person begins to see no point for life no use in being here that person is already tending to a suicidality and then we have feeling of hopelessness i already mentioned that mental health issues like depression bipolar ptsd um borderline personality all of that then death as as funny as that might sound the person who is in debt owing and literally has no <laughs> economic no source of income to pay back such people we had one in our area recently who committed suicide because he he repairs phones and then while he was repairing the phone the phone got stolen from his shop and then you and i think it's all these phones that are almost half a million and oh wow i don't even know just know that someone stole the phone from his shop then the owner came and the owner was not having any mercy harassing him taking him to police station he was bailed out oh. the guy just went to his village and just killed himself there because he couldn't pay back for the phone so that sometimes debt when a person is owing legal cases when you having legal issues that's why you know when 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 we're talking about people coming out to to point out rape perpetrators or anybody it's it's always essential to always hammer on the fact that you cannot lie against somebody that the person had raped you or assaulted you because you don't know the private battles the ruins the person's past That's them the reputation and, and all of that and some people from there we had one case i can't remember the guy's name who killed himself because some them saw a girl accused him of i don't know whether it's online sexual harassment or something and the guy took his own life so things like a legal cases a a a smear on the person's past them reputation financial issues family stress chronic pain i don't know if you've heard of this thing called messy killing that thing is still in court whether it should be allowed in indonesia Yes, it is yeah. So a person who is going through a health condition and the person is feeling so in so much pain and can and, and feels that the best thing to just do is just to end it all. Drugs are not working, pain is so much. So sometimes also physical health condition. I know we we, we had a discussion earlier on cancer and all of that. People who yeah. have have terminal illness, terminal diseases that that we now compound With stigmatization, with prejudice, with all of that, it affects them because they are seemingly they are being pushed, they are being secluded, left to loneliness. And one of the quick symptoms of suicide is isolation. When they begin to, to isolate, so that seemingly nobody is able to stop them mm-hmm. in suicide suicide completion. So isolation, physical conditions, mental health conditions, and general socialization conditions. The person who is being bullied. person who's been picked on, spoken bad of, not listened to, secluded, left alone, not given attention, all of that, all of that. Yeah. So the causes are very subject based. There are a lot of causes, but you need to really dig deep into a person's subjective reality to be able to find out what is causing this person's particular suicidal ideation, to be able to stop a suicidal completion. Okay. Yeah. And but is there a way to is it you know somehow when i was doing my um research there was a thin line be- between the crosses and the risk like those who are at risk to to um, be um suicidal so is there like a way to avoid this high risk or risk of being suicidal you know maybe is there anything you could do to stay away from being oh, okay. a risk factor Being at, being at risk i think yeah. what you mean by risk according to the dsm and research men are found to be at higher risk in the sense that okay let me put it like this women have much more suicidal ideation 
but men have much more suicidal completion yeah, so, yeah yeah so women have more thought of suicide but they never actually make do on it completed but men are usually successful once they do it so the major ways to avoid it is to pay attention to your mental health it's really really important to pay attention to your own mental health and to pay attention to the mental health of those around you you notice signs and symptoms when the person has a physical health condition you just go you, you go beyond just downing the person with drugs to really to really be sure the person is fine because in psychology there's something called the mind body relationship it is literally impossible for something to be wrong with the body and it to not affect the mind or something to be wrong with the mind and it to not affect the body in fact the quickest way to know something is wrong with the mind is when you see a person the way they dress the way they take care of themselves you begin to wonder is this one okay upstairs because Similarly, whatever goes on in the mind shows forth in the body, and whatever happens in the body shows in the mind. So it's important to ensure that mental health is given paramount attention. That that would include social interaction. If you if, if if a person has noticed that they are having suicidal ideations, they are beginning to see life as hopeless. There's change in sleep routine. They are beginning to feel like isolating themselves. They are pre- preoccupied with violence, preoccupied with dying, preoccupied with death. They are, they are, you see them beginning to gather things that could end life. The person, for no reason, is having a gun, a knife, having poison. The person is, 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 is talking about um, death by hanging or death yeah. in general, and the person is smiling. You're wondering, doesn't this person know that death is a finality? <laughs> and the person is talking about yeah. death in a joking way. The person is so obsessed with violent movies. The person is, is, is painting suicide in a very beautiful way to people. Those are red flags. She begins to wonder, person uh, who's beginning to pack up, seemingly wants to see everybody, talking like I see it at the end. Oh, so yeah. when I go, make sure you take care of this person. Especially old people, they like they do that. You know, when they, they are yeah. sharing, they are sharing their stuff, doing all of that. Those are signs. It is therefore important that we pay attention to our mental health. We pay attention to the mental health of others. And shows that whenever we get healthcare, we get all-round healthcare, both mental and physical, from therapists, psychologists, including our physicians, everybody. And then it's also important to ensure that we get good sleep, good sleep, seven to eight hours, eat balanced diet, because our behavior is controlled by our brain, and we need to ensure that we are feeding ourselves well, eat well, ensure that we speak to people whenever we feel lonely, isolated, rather than ingest things and keep them in and not let them out it's good to speak to people respectfully though it's good to speak to people speak to family and friends and then it's also good to follow doctor's recommendations especially a person who is currently in mental health care that's mm-hmm. that's one of the re- that's one of the things that causes a, a spike the person who was having suicidal ideation or has attempted now came in for help and then is giving drugs and the person begins to skip there's going to be issues so the person has to ensure that they ad- adhere to medication, adhere to doctor's recommendations, and as much as possible, if they can take friends and family along, and if we let ourselves... Let me cut you in. Sorry. Yeah. Sorry, for, uh, sorry about that. But um, I wanted to just add something before we get to, like, the help, um, the help, how, how to help one who is um, 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 suicidal. Um, you mentioned um, that men are more at risk because they they get to the completion. So there was a thing I read about you know why that is because the women they take mostly maybe drugs or the, to make it slower for someone to intervene, but the men mostly just use maybe guns and you just bah, and that's it. But the women tend to hopefully, maybe they, in their mind, they'll be hopeful that uh, maybe somebody can come and intervene while this is going on. So some say it as a cry for help. When suicide is completed, when there's death from um, suicide, there are people who are left behind, the loved ones that are the suicide lost survivors. So how do you think this affects the loved ones left? 
it, it it really does affect them because in suicide, I think that there's this saying that um, suicide is not an option. It's it's not it's not an option that is taught out when a person is thinking straight. That's just the truth. Mm-hmm. Because as human beings, I said it earlier, our survival instinct is to keep alive, stay safe, and not expose ourselves to the risk of death. So when you see a person turning towards the other side, there's obviously a problem. Now, it has effects in the sense that suicide in itself pushes the problem from the person to others. So rather than a person going in for help and, and being better, this person has pushed, pushed the, the problem to a wider range of people, the family. We can look at it, first of all, from a cultural perspective. I can only speak particularly for the Yoruba culture, because that's where I was socialized. And I know that um, families who have a person who has killed themselves, sometimes they get ostracized. They are, they are singles are no longer eligible for marriage. In the sense that once a person shows interest in getting married from a family of a person who has committed suicide, they start, they want to get into a family where they always kill themselves, even though it's just one person that did it. So there's that, that family, they kill themselves. So culturally, has an, it has an effect in the sense that the family as a whole from which that person comes from, they are pushed out, segregated and segregated. They are considered as, as um, abominations and abominable people. Okay, and then when, 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 you said what? I said they see them as uh, uh, outcasts. They yeah. can see them outcasts. Yeah, so culturally, suicide is frowned at. And even though the person similarly has gone to rest, that's what they think they've gone to rest. They've left the problems for their family to face. The religious considerations also, apart from the cultural, we have the religious too, in the sense that our religions frown at it and no one really wants to be found out in their places of worship as the family member of people who, you know, it, it brings to question, certainly particularly the head of the family, it brings to question how, how much have you led, led your family in the way of your faith? It brings the question yeah. competence. It brings the question competence. And then as, as, as family members on our own, it brings the question, are we really so neglectful of our family members? Is it that we are not carrying everyone along? Are we really not in tune with everyone? And that in itself, mm-hmm. for parents in particular, it could, it could bring that pain of, so I, I, I was not noticing. I was negligent. I wasn't. That in its own self, in its own self brings self-blame. So the family members now begin to take on themselves the blame of what happened. If we had known, if we had been proactive, when this person said this, if we are taking them serious. So the whole family is thrown into seemingly mild depression again. And if not taken care of, someone might go off and it may become really, really severe depression. So yes, the family member gets to have the backlash from society, from their faith, from themselves as human beings, from their competence, they begin to question their love for the person. If you say, I really love that person, why didn't I notice all this? Some of them even say, begin to think of the fact that if I was really as close to this person as our relationship showed, why didn't this person share this with me? Was this something about me that this person... So they begin to look inward. So those affected begin to look inward and self-blame if we had done better. If we had... You know, the problem of if is not a problem. Especially when a person is dead, you can't ask the person questions anymore. So it seemingly it's like you're asking questions that have no answers. And that in itself could push them to the beginning of depression and that. So yes, suicide has effect on those left behind. And that's one of the things we tell people who have suicidal ideation, the fact that you're not solving this problem, you're only pushing it through your loved one. And it might, it might be longer on them than with you if you had treated it rather than ending it. Okay. Um, yeah. I- I know you brushed on this a little bit, but I want you to just spell it out. You know, how can one tell that someone is suicidal? Okay. From I think the first the first things that you look out for their words and their behavior. Some people tell you I don't. You see someone um, expressing regret for being alive. I don't even know why I'm still alive. Am I still here? Some of them can even say, Why did God even see? Why did okay? For example. Someone who was involved in an accident with someone else saw that that gruesome, um, went through that experience, saw blood, saw death, 
such a person might be having PTSD, recurrent um, visualization of what happened and all of that. And then you, over time, the person could begin to ask, why did that person die and not me? As for all, that person is better than me. When somebody is beginning to express regret for being alive, when the person is beginning to be preoccupied with violence and things that involve violence, death, horror movies, you see this person being so accepting of death. The person hears of the death of the person and the first thing the person says is, oh, that person is so lucky. I really wish it were me. You get the person, something that everyone is pushing away, this person is seeming to appreciate it. You stumble on, on, on drugs, the person, medications the person is not on. Why do you have this much medication? What are you doing with them? It's like, it's like, it's like a, I'm even looking for that word. It's like a mixed multitude. Let me just put it like that. Sorry for, I can't remember the name word. It's like a cocktail, a cocktail of drugs. You just okay. drugs for this, drugs for that, drugs for this. You just have a stash of drugs. And you're wondering why. Why do you have all this? person is beginning to have dangerous instruments in possession, gone, having a rope. You get things that could end life. person is beginning to have it. Now, for someone who is on medication, and the person knows that this medication has to be taken daily to preserve life, you begin to notice the person is keeping drugs, complaining so much on pain, yet is refusing to take drugs. The person is telling everybody, begging, some of them even beg to be killed. Especially people who are, who are in chronic pain, they beg, why are you guys still keeping me this long? Why are you still keeping me on? Surely for old people who feel that their children would be better off using the money for their care, for taking care of themselves, rather than spending so much on their health care and there's no much hope of them getting better. So you see, verbally, they begin to express regrets for life, express hopelessness. They express little faith for 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 what tomorrow holds. You see them fantasizing over death, talking about it, smiling when people die, consumed with issues of violence, death, regretting life, possessing things that could end life that normally they didn't have, changing routine, the person used to be so social, beginning to isolate and all of that. And usually if a person notices well, you won't notice it. So there's always that death aura. They always like they want it to come faster, literally. So, and then you could also go directly by asking. Some people believe you ask, you can increase the risk of them now beginning. To, no, it's not true. You could ask this person, are you considering suicide? If you're suspecting, you could just ask, are you considering? The person said, well, it comes once in a while. Don't, don't just brush it off. Ask questions. So what's your plan? How, what are the possible ways you think you will try it if you were to? What do you have in your possession right now? And all of that. Okay. Okay. So yes. speaking about that now, um, what role can can one play as friends or family to help someone who's suicidal? How can someone help someone who is suicidal? Yeah, as friends and family, like mm -hmm. like it's general when you want to help a person, you don't yeah. first put the person, you don't first put the person down. So when you notice a person is having suicidal ideation or they've walked up to you to confide in you or open up to you or you discovered by asking and noticing patterns, the first thing you do is not to put them down. Is it that small thing that is making you to not be thinking that you want to kill yourself? Uh -uh. But you, you don't do that. You don't talk down because that may be the last time they ever open up. They could pretend to get better. And the next thing you just hear is that you've completed it. So you must, first of all, have that open arms to receive them. Do not blame. Do not put okay. down at all. Do not go around talking about it. Uh, do you know this person? Even if you are a member of family and the person now opens up to you, you don't know in a general family meeting. Hey guys, do you know that this person has been? No, you don't, you don't do that. You seek the person's permission and then you seek help for the person. Encourage the person to go in for, to a mental health practitioner, a mental health expert. They have them all over a psychiatric hospital. We have them in loot, private clinics. You could walk, and then it's always important to go with them, to go with them, because sometimes they, they may not be able to hold in all the information the therapist is giving and all of that. It could help to support, checking on them, ensuring that you don't leave them alone, and then giving them an emergency number. Whenever you're feeling like this and you don't know what to do, just call me. <clears throat> when you call me and you say this, so that it's not like every time they call, 
your first question is are you feeling like killing yourself no so there's like a cold word you get <laughs> so there's like a cold word you guys start with once the person says they are feeling this or i'm feeling blue or i'm feeling what's the best you guys you just uh, agree on a cold word once the person yeah. uses that cold word the moment you pick the phone you know what the person is going through at that moment okay. so as family and friends we can be there to ensure that we encourage give a helping hand social support interact with them and never leave them alone keep the dangerous objects as far away from them as possible follow them for therapy sessions and ensure that they have someone they can reach out to in in cases of emergency and then as therapy when they come the well, therapy is not hook line and sink and sense that it's not one one that one size fits all once a person mm-hmm. comes and you get to understand the person's subjective experience there are a lot of therapy techniques that can be used and I, and i believe that therapists are really capable in, in doing that but what is really important is that family and friends aspect because the moment you can get a person to a therapist the therapist has his job to do and knows what to do but the important part like we all face let me say psychologist therapist the problem we face majorly let me just say it now <laughs> is people not wanting to complete treatment you come in first time second time third time and your treatment plan says you have 15 sessions and you come in for the first three because you are beginning to feel better you stop coming and then you come in six in um, six weeks later when the problem has increased and you expect a miracle we have to start again so family and friends was ensured this person stays in treatment stays adhered to the drugs stays in line with what the doctor or psychiatrist or anyone recommends and show that they don't need them alone somebody who has opened up to you that they are suicidal is not a person you don't reach out you reach out to once in a week you know it has to be every day check on them take them out don't allow them isolate keep dangerous videos instruments and all of that away from them that's how we can help okay so are there any um numbers emergency numbers they can call are there any is there any name of an organization that they could reach out to for someone who is um, suicidal there are but i can't mention some of my head now but i know mm-hmm. say that i volunteer with santo andre we have emergency numbers i could share with you then you could share it. then there are other organizations like sopin that are giving that, that are for suicide prevention they also have crisis and helpline if it is for mm-hmm. <clears throat> cases of child abuse or a child has opened up we have uh, chicheyara chicheyara they so they have their own they have an app and they have the helpline so you could just go on but i would i will help you with this information but you could just go online for crisis helpline in nigeria and they are there they are there to help okay anyway yeah. the information will be in the uh, description anyway with the names of the um organizations and their yeah. numbers for anyone who needs help so that's all of the questions that i i want to ask and i'm really glad we um we've i think we've we've touched a lot of places we've covered a lot of places concern a lot of yeah. things concerning um um suicide so thank you very very much Sharon Guys, I'm going to put her social media. I'll put all that also in the description. So thank you so much. Thank you so much. You're for welcome. Watching. Thank you so much, guys, for watching the video this far. I hope you've learned something. And if you have, please share. Also comment. We'd like to know your views. We'd like to really know your views. We'd like to know what you think about Suzanne. And don't forget to subscribe. subscribe <laughs> subscribe and hit the bell button so you get notified when i post new, new videos i'll catch you guys some other time bye